Hello and welcome to everybody on my channel Cloud Fitness. So today we are going to talk about how we can manipulate our data, how we can modify our data using data frames in Databricks. Now the very first question that lies is what are data frames? So data frames you can consider them as uh, simple data structures which are more of uh, in a tabular format. So they are not actual tables. So remember that point that data frames are not tables, but they look like table. They have similar column and row based structure where each column might have different data types and every row has a value associated to a column. So data frames are definitely more, uh, you know, uh, optimized uh, than the basic RDDs that you have in Spark. And uh, yes, they are also immutable just like your RDDs and we can talk more about the data frames, data sets and RDDs in a separate video if you want. So let's go ahead and see how we can read a file uh, using the data frames in uh, Databricks. So uh, for this purpose, we have read.csv option. This read.csv option will actually take three parameters which will be the path of your file which can be even your external system in case you are mounting a data lake then you can give the path associated to that data lake and then read it. So right now my file is present in DBFS Databricks file system so I am directly reading my file from DBFS and I have mentioned the path of my file and this is a CSV file so it is a comma separated so I have, I have mentioned the separator here and the header equal to 2. So you always need to take care whether your file has a header or not based on that you have to provide true or false value here. So this is how your data frame gets created. There is another way of creating a data frame which is SQL context. Earlier I used Spark but in the second scenario I am using SQL context to create a data frame while reading the CSV. Rest all part will actually remain the same. And do remember one point that while creating a data frame you uh, the data is not actually stored inside a data frame it just contains the lineage system which is similar to the rdd object so even when you try to print the data frame so just like i have tried to print a data frame here the first one so it will actually show you the metadata it's not going to show you the data itself it is going to show you the metadata it is going to uh, show you what are the columns and what are the data types now since uh, my file is CSV, so everything here is, you know, by default a string format. Now let's see how you can create an RDD out of a data frame. So for any reason you will uh, or you might need to create an RDD out of, out of your data frame. So for that you have rdd.map function. So this rdd.map function takes a parameter inside it which can be like, for example, I am creating an RDD and my I want my data to look like a list inside an RDD. So that is the reason I have provided a list here. So when you run this, so this is the data frame that I've created above uh, by reading a CSV file from DBFS and then I'm trying to create an RDD out of it. So rdd.map will actually create an RDD and take, dot ten, take 10 will actually perform an action on that RDD created and will print me the first 10 rows of my data. Now when you see this, it has actually list. So I have five columns, so I have list of these five, five columns. You can see this. So this is the list. So if I want, I can make it as tuple. So tuple is another data type uh, if you are familiar with the Python. So in the similar way, instead of list, now you can see that my RDD has tuples. So this is how you can create your RDD from data frame. Now let's go ahead and see how we can, you know, visualize our data from data frame. So what are the different ways how we can visualize our data? So most of the people, everybody actually, they, they use show. So data frame dot show. Uh, let's run this. So to visualize the data from the data frame that you have created, you use dot show uh, and inside dot show, I have mentioned here n equal to 5 so that it takes less time to demonstrate. Uh, this n equal to 5 will actually give you only the top 5 rows that comes out from your CSV. Otherwise, you can, you know, skip this option as well mentioning n equal to 5. 
so you can see everything is in a proper tabular format so you it's very good to visualize as well and very good to understand now let's see how data frame dot collect works so this data frame dot collect this will actually separate out everything in form of rows so it will now you can see it's it looks it looks little messy and it's difficult to read so that is why people actually prefer using dot show uh, rather than dot collect here now let's see how head works so data frame dot head this is similar to the collect only now um, head five will actually give me the top five rows also uh, that, that, uh, that's the only difference that is it is going to give me the top five rows otherwise it's similar to the collect now let's comment this out and move forward now let's see how we can actually select you know few columns out of my data frame so i might need uh, only two columns or three columns for my for my data downstream systems in that case on data frame i can simply put data frame dot select and i can mention the name of the columns i want to operate on so uh, this is how we have to do it dot select i'm i'm on only taking species and sepal length for say and i'm just showing this you know dot show to visualize uh, the output so you can actually see since i've selectively taken only two columns i have these two columns now uh, let's say you have read the file from any xyz location be it the data lake or you're taking it from dbfs now you want to see the scheme of the file you want to see the what are the columns uh, associated to the file so in that case from the data frame you can simply write the f uh, whatever the name of your data frame is dot schema or dot columns so let's run this df uh, one dot schema so it will actually show me the schema so this is the schema of my file which i am trying to read so when you talk about this uh, struct type this is a data type actually you know it represents a row and similarly struct field is uh, inside the struct type i will discuss more about this in detail so this is something this is actually how you define uh, a structure to your file a schema to your file in spark we will discuss more about this in detail uh, in our next videos maybe and then let's see how we can uh, see the columns of a data frame df1.columns so you can see here only the columns have the which are present in my file have come up here the five columns which are present also we might need to see the data types right of our file so for that we can simply use df the name of your data frame and the data types so df1.d types this will actually show you the data types so here you can see i have the column named as sepal and sepal width so all the all the columns are in uh, string format so it has shown me string here also we might need to drop a column from our uh, data frame right so for dropping a column there are two ways either you can drop them drop the column directly or you can only selectively uh, select few columns so if you want to selectively select few columns from your data frame you can like i showed it uh, above dot select and you can only select the columns you want to and otherwise you can also drop the columns using the drop here i so the data frame dot drop so this is the column from my data frame iris df which i want to drop so let's see how it works so if i'm dropping it and i'm trying to show this so you can actually see the column beta length is not present so it has dropped that particular column so these are the two ways in which you can actually uh, you know select select a particular columns or drop a column in case you want to you have a requirement to convert the data types for that you can use the cast function it is very similar to your sql cast or your python cast now this is the data frame that i have i data it is the data frame in this data frame so i have uh, like i think i did not mention this data frames are immutable in nature so uh, this is the data frame in on the top that i've created i'm reading it from csv iris underscore data types now using this data frame iris underscore data types 
I am creating another data frame I data. So in this while creating this data frame I data, I am actually manipulating it. I am manipulating it to convert the data types. How I am doing that? I am using select statement, uh, select function. In that select function, I am actually mentioning that from my iris data type, so from my this particular data frame, pick up this particular column named as sepal length and cast it to float. So this is how it works. So I have cast it to float three columns. So uh, sepal length, sepal width and petal length. So these are the three columns that I have casted from my iris data type data frame which I created above and out of which I have created another data frame I data. So let's visualize how it works. So uh, I, I have written data frame dot D types to see how data types have changed. So for the first one, so I have like printed both the data frame before manipulation and after manipulation. So before manipulation all was string. But after manipulation, I have selected three columns. I have selected three columns and I have casted them to float. So you can actually see that my data frame I data will have float uh, sepal length, sepal width and petal length. Now let's go ahead and see how we can sort the data. Now to sort the data, again, you have to uh, basically uh, it's very simple. You have to provide sort functions on the column you want to sort on and you have to define whether you have to sort it on in ascending or descending order. So this is how you do it. Iris data frame. So the, this is the name of the data frame that I have created above. And then I am just using sort on species column ascending order equal to true and I am trying to show it. So this is how the output will actually look like. So everything will be sorted based on the value of my column. So setosa will come first, nulls will be placed first and then your numeric and then your, you know, then ascending based on ascending equals to true, your alphabetical order, it is going to show you the data. Also, you might be wondering what is this, either schema st uh, struct type. So uh, let's say you want to define your schema while reading the file. So previously when we were reading the file, we were not defining the schema. But we do have an option to define it. We can create a schema. So I have created either schema here. Now this is the struct type which I was talking about earlier. Inside that struct type, I have struct fields. So these, uh, this struct field will actually define how my columns will look like, what will be the name of my column, what will be the uh, data type of my column, whether it is nullable or not. So this is how you actually define the schema. And once I've defined the schema and I'm reading my file, the here I can write the schema equal to iris schema. So please take the schema which I have defined here and then create a data frame out of it. And after creating a data frame, sort it. So this is how it works. Now let's say we want to filter the data based on some condition. So if you want to filter the data, then in that case, right, you can simply use uh, uh, this filter. Let's on uncomment it and see how it works. Also, since I'm using this uh, struct type, I'll have to import the packages. Let's do that. From PySpark dot SQL dot from PySpark dot SQL dot types import star and then let's try to run this. So what we are doing here is we are simply using a filter function. So iris uh, one dot. Uh, so this is the name of the data frame that is created using this uh, schema. And then I'm just trying to filter out. Filter out what? Filter uh, filter species equal to equal to setosa. So uh, dot show. So dot show will actually uh, help me to visualize the contents of my uh, 
data frame it will actually perform uh, operation on the data frame so that i can see the data now uh, dot filter species is equal to setosa so this will actually show me uh, you know the data from my data frame where species are equal to setosa so this is how we can do the filter operation on my data frames now let's see the other way round how we can do it and let's try and run this so uh, this is the other way around and uh, like depends on how you want to do it and uh, what are your requirements so in this again i have iris uh, data frame in that i am i am actually um, specifying the column so my column is species i want to filter based on species i'm just mentioning here is in option so species is in setosa so i have i have actually mentioned a condition that please take me the like please uh, get me the data where the species column from my iris 1 underscore df1 my species column is in setosa and then i'm trying to show it so when i show it so i'll probably have the same output not probably actually you will have the same output both are the same so let's go ahead and see how distinct and count works so when you talk about distinct and count right this is like these are also the basic operations you want to see how many let's say from my uh, data perspective i want to see how many species are there how many distinct species are there and uh, what, what is the count so for that simple functions distinct and count they will work they will work pretty well so uh, you can write data frame dot select select what select the column the column i want to uh, put distinct on i want to see the count on and you can see here five so basically i have five different species here so the count it has actually reflected the count so let's see so let's say if i don't want to see the count i just want to see what are the different species so i can directly uh, use distinct and then show so let's see what are the let's see uh, there are five distinct species or not one two three four and five so you can actually see there are five distinct species so null will actually be counted uh, as a value here so please uh, keep that in mind so this was uh, i think uh, this is enough for this video we'll talk about this in more detail we'll go more in depth i'll try to increase increase the complexities in my future videos when we'll deal with the data frames and i'll also talk about rdds and data sets and do remember to subscribe to my channel and let me know anything you would like to uh, you know uh, want me to make a video on a particular topic please feel free to comment it out thank you so much